In today's video, I'm going to run through the Turkish getup. Okay, the Turkish getup, two key positions that you want to have, apart from obviously the same leg to the kettlebells bent, kettlebells straight up in the air, is the arm and leg position of the other leg. This leg should be out 45 degrees. That's going to be help for you to get that leg back behind you, underneath your hip into a lunge position, and the other one is arm out to the side. That's going to help you get a good push and the hand is directly in the position that it needs to be when you get into your first part of the movement. Turkish get up is a great mobility exercise, yes core exercise, but really good posterior chain exercise because of how you initiate the movement. You initiate the movement by driving this foot into the ground to work the glute. So the glute is initiating the movement to get onto this opposite elbow. So as I go glute and then drive into the elbow with this and drives into the lats, so there's two really good posterior chain movements. We then want to get into a hand position next part that a lot of people struggle with is the hip extension. So hip extension, nice and high into a single-legged bridge. So those are things you might want to practice, just that single-legged bridge movement. You're really trying to get in what muscles have to work. It's the glutes, it's the low back. From there, you get your knee directly underneath that hip. So you want to have kind of like that 90 degrees there with this hand still down. Then you will sit up and you need to adjust your feet so that everything is facing forward. Keeping that kettlebell up overhead. You shift the movement onto the front of the leg and that's how you finish the top of the Turkish getup. One rep of the Turkish getup is finishing on the ground, so that leg has to go back onto the ground. Double check that you still have 90 degrees, 90 degrees. It's going to set you up for a good position to the descent, which is hand out to the side from the hip. That way it's easier to get the leg out. If we put the hand behind, we're already stuck trying to get this leg out. So from this position, it should be hand out to the side, that way a little bit of hip extension to get that leg out, we finish, and we should be back into that movement where we're here, the leg is already out 45, arm is already out 45, and you're ready to do your second rep. Now, common restrictions that I see, shoulder mobility is one, yes, core strength is another one, and hip mobility. I'm gonna take you through three movements to improve those three things. So the first one with shoulder mobility, it's mainly People that tight through the whole shoulder girdle, thoracic spine, shoulder joint issue that when they come up, they don't have the ability to keep this up over the head. So I'm going to work on that one first, and I'll go into some other exercises for hip mobility and core. So the first one, really good one to work on spinal mobility, because spinal mobility is important in everyday life. This is also going to help put that shoulder back into the capsule in the proper way. So we get into that position, almost like a Turkish get-up position. This leg is not going to be out to the side. The other arm is going to be up, basically out of the way. You still initiate the movement to work on that spinal mobility where our, our L4 or L1 to L5 the spine is moving first, then we move into the mid thoracic, into the thoracic. That's the movement of this as it goes. As you can see, my lumbar spine is moving first, my next part of my spine, and then shifting. I'm then going to use this leg to give me a bit of assistance to extra weight to assist in me trying to rotate my body down to the ground. I'm going to keep my eyes on the kettlebell and you can see that stretching through my shoulder. Also my thoracic spine, also my neck muscles to get that head to the kettlebell and I come back down. So you can see how all the spinal movements are integrated as well. A lot of people are stiff through the spine in general. But again, it's the movement of that shoulder coming back. And you want to rev this out, nice good stretch. You might want to stay here five to 10 seconds, feel that stretch. Feel the shoulder sinking down into the capsule and coming back. Again, pushing ground first, assistance, and come back. That's a good one for the spinal mobility. If you want to target the shoulder a little bit more, we're still going to focus on that left side because I was focusing on the left side there. You can do what's called a sleeper stretch. Sleeper stretch is more for tightness of the internal rotators of the shoulders. So basically, you can put your head on a pillow or a foam rub or something to assist your head here. You get into a 90 degree position here and you take your hand up like this. We're going to take that arm to its end range of motion. You can see I've worked out already today so my shoulder's a bit tight. That's about the range of motion I can get. Nice little self-assessment. 45 degrees when you have pretty reasonable mobile shoulders. Okay, so what we do from here, you can take your hand and just push down gently to get a little bit more of an active stretch. Then we're going to go into a contraction. So with this hand here, I'm going to push back up into this one. So take it to my end range. I'm going to push up for five seconds. Contract that shoulder muscle that I'm stretching. What's what happens when I relax? I relax, I've taken to a new range of motion. Stay there. You want to breathe, you want to get the nervous system to react 
to your new position of your stretch. And from there, you're going to contract again up for five seconds. Three, two, one, and relax. And again, I've increased my range of motion. You'll start to feel it really start to pull towards your, your really limited range of motion. You want to take yourself through there. I like to do about three to five reps, depending on the person and the client and how much it's actually restricting the movement. You will know when you've taken your point to its absolute limit. That's the two for the shoulders. First one we'll go into is the hip flexor stretch. Now the hip flexor is crucial for those people who can't get that extension in the Turkish get up. And those people who are here, and no matter how they try and get that extension, they just can't get out behind the heel, which really inhibits how they can get their leg underneath, what position this arm happens to because they can't get their hips up. Generally, if that's not from the glutes and the hamstrings or the glute and the low back power on that side to get up, sometimes it's hip flexor. So we're going to take you to hip flexor stretch. Should be held for about two to three minutes. We see a lot of people that typical hip flexor stretch is just into here. Now that basically targets the arc, il iliacus. The il iliacus sits on top of the fossa and the fossa is only going to give you that sort of motion. The hip flexor, because of the angle that it runs, actually attaches between L1 and L4. You want to get in some pelvis, pelvic tuck into spinal rotation. So how we do this, again, because of the way the hip flexor runs, you want to take your back foot out slightly. Otherwise, again, there's targeting iliacus. Take that to the side. You put your hands on your hip. We're going to a lumbar lordosis, so external rotation of the pelvis. And I want you to tuck that underneath into a posterior tilt. I always like to do two because you usually find on the second one you get a little bit further. Now you're going to pick your chest up. You already start to feel that pull more in the arcus right now. Then if you raise your arms straight up, the fascia comes with you. But now we want to rotate. We're going to turn the shoulders over this leg and then the side flexion because that is the way the psoas comes in and around and attaches around to L1 to L4 because of the tuck, the side flexion and the rotation. Hold on to that, you can put a chair here, basically think about all those things, the bum tuck, the chest up, the arm reach over with a turn and a side flexion. So I'll do it one more time for you. So you're in position, back leg goes out, two bum tucks. Hold that second one, chest goes up, raise this arm and you start to feel it over. Then going to rotate your shoulders over that front leg, side flexion. Just gonna hold there, hold onto a chair or something. Nice two to three minute hold there will increase the flexibility of your cellos. The next stretch I want to take you into is the stretch of the piriformis. Tight hips, tight piriformis are going to again limit you in the hip extension, also really limit you in trying to get that leg back and underneath you in the Turkish get up, which is another thing that I find to be a common problem. I'm going to use a ball here, you don't have to use a ball. You can use a bench or a chair, but I want to use this so you can see some angles in my spine that I'll show you really quickly. So to initiate the movement, you set up onto Something that's going to keep you upright. That's why I like the ball because you can kind of manipulate it where you want. The chair is kind of awkward. You then want to get into a position where it's 90 degrees at this front knee, 90 degrees at the back knee. And you then want to double check that if I'm sitting upright here, that my hips, I have a, I have a line where my hip is facing kind of that way. I want to just make sure, double check that that knee is inside that line. Then I'm going to keep my chest up and to make sure that my lumbar lordosis is arched, it is not flattened. And you're going to basically lean forward hand is going to catch you until you feel your first stretch on, that, on this side glute area. And that's why I want to show you with the ball, because you can see, I might show you on this side, is my lumbar position. So when I'm into this position here, I'm locked. I am then folding forward and I can already feel my first stretch about there. I'll show you why we do it this way in a second. So basically I've taken myself to the end range just like the other stretches that I showed you, I'm trying to increase range of motion is basically what you're trying to do. A stretch is a stretch, you might just feel good. But some stretches you want to use as corrective stretches where you're trying to increase your range of motion. So as I go here, I'm going to take a deep breath in, keeping that lumbar lordosis and my chest up, I'm going to breathe out and relax and find a new part of the stretch. Again, you want to relate, wait for the nervous system to react to the new position that you're in. Keep that lumbar lordosis and breathing in. Everything out and relax. So again, that position in my low back is important because you can watch as I go. If I round out, I could get quite far and I can almost get like a yoga pose into a pigeon pose there. This correlates highly to, yes, stretching the piriformis, isolating it because here, going around it, is going to target a lot more areas in the piriformis. And I also like to use it because it's going to educate people who don't know how to keep the arch in the back and deadlifts, um, remaining deadlifts, squats, who just don't understand 
that hip pelvis coordination when trying to keep that lumbar lordosis. That's why I like to do it um, on the ball for one, where it gets to move with me and I can keep that arch there. So next one I want to show you, I'm going to use the cable system. I've got one after this that you can do on your own. So this one, if you haven't got a cable system, could be used with the assistance of someone else tying a band around your ankle. So well, again, what I'm trying to do is work on my hips. So hip mobility of that internal rotation and stuck kind of in that hip area, which is really restricted for some people in their Turkish get-ups. So I'm going to position this. Again, it's not ideal for this stretch. I'll just grab this strap and I'm going to put it on my foot here. And I'm going to try and get into position. I have to try and angle my body so that I'm balancing here. And you can see how I'm using this weight to then stretch that hip area. It's pulling me this way. So this is one of those ones where if you relax enough, the muscles are going to find a newfound range of motion. What I like to do with this is contract the opposite muscle, sort of like PNF style on this hip stretch. As I bring it in, contracting my adductors, again, you do get piriformis to contract to internally rotate that foot. I then relax and I can then relax almost I feel I'm now relaxed into a new range of motion. So if you had a partner with a band or a rope, something, a towel even, pulling your foot out this side, you want to feel that external rotation. Every sort of five to 10 seconds again, contract the opposite muscle, relax. Contract and relax. Now this one coupled with the next one I'm going to show you, I find dramatic increases in my hip mobility straight away and it improves my squats, my deadlifts and my Turkish get ups particularly. So the next one is another one you can do yourself. Again, trying to increase the range of motion through the hips. Get into the same position that you were on the 99 hip stretch on the ball, the one I showed you at the start. You need a stick if you can, a broomstick, a dowel rod, whatever you can use. The, the setup position is not too strict because we are stretching the back one, not the front one. So we don't have to worry too much about this 99 here. I'm going to stick this stick underneath my ankle here and again get that hip into that internal rotation. Now that's, this is a very challenging one. For me, I do have tight hips. This is gonna be hard for me to hold. Basically, I'm gonna take that stick away and try and hold my shoe there with all my might of my piriformis, trying to hold that and externally rotate. All those hip external rotators, internal rotators, trying to keep that foot there. I then bring the stick up underneath, and then try and relax, driving the stick into my hip or my thigh, I've then taken it to a new range of motion. You can continuously do this, you would like to try when you take the stick away from this new range of motion, try and keep it there. I can tell you for me, it's not going to be great staying there. Five seconds. Can I get this under? Relax and take it to a new range of motion. So you can see how form is critical on the ball because you can cheat by leaning over, but you can see how it instantly achieves more mobility through here. The next one I'm going to throw in here is how to strengthen the core. And I'm assuming if you're watching this, you kind of already get the gist of of what a Turkish get-up is and you just want to improve your Turkish get-up. But I'm going to throw this in there anyway so some people you'll see they actually can't get up out of Turkish, Turkish get-up position because they're just not strong enough into the core. So call this like a, a bowl to a dish. I'm going to talk you through it now. So and you'll see when you're in this position and you're trying to get into that Turkish get-up position, it's spinal flexion and rotation. So you've got a lot of rectus abdominis coming up and oblique. So there's that spinal you're working on, yes, your rectus abdominis release, but it's also quite, it requires a lot of spinal flexion. So it is spinal flexion and rotation. You'd be surprised that the average person who works in an office is restricted to their thoracic mobility because they're constantly at a desk all the time. So this is a good one year to work on the core and the spinal mobility as well. So the movement is, what we're trying to think about, once you create a nice little hollow dish here, we're then going to initiate the movement through that spinal flexion, rotation, into extension, which is really good posterior chain movement, and coming back, can I come back with that external rotation, coming back with my core, and finish in that disposition. So a lot of people will cheat, they will go, momentum, so that's cheating. They will also drive this elbow, I don't know if you can see, this elbow into the ground to get back. If you watch mine again, it's all coming from the core. It's initiating from the rest of the abdominis and the rotation, the spinal flexion, into the side. So I've got here, I initiate a movement through that spinal flexion, I get into extension, just use my core there, and then come back, use my back extensors, my core, and come back. And as you can see, that's my second rep, if you point it out, I cheated by driving my leg into the ground. So I'm going to try that again. As I go, spinal flexion into extension, come back using my core, 
and finish there. Good little way. It improves a lot of things, a lot of exercises, squats, deadlifts, chin-ups, bench press, a lot of things like that. You want to work on five reps in one direction and then roll and tumble the other way so you get the used to spinal flexion on the other side. Great little one for your core. Thanks for watching guys. I hope this gives you an insight into how to improve your Turkish get up. Give me a like or a comment to let it know this is the type of content that you like and I'll put more up there for you. Hope you enjoy. I'll see you guys soon.